Many of you told me that the first tutorial for Spline that I made was a little bit too complex because it was an iPhone with a camera bump, the buttons and everything. And you guys wanted to learn something that's even simpler but could have a very nice effect for your portfolio. So today we're gonna work on a very simple grid of phones, but they're not gonna be as complex as that first iPhone. I have an example of a grid like that done in Sketch in completely 2D, and we're gonna try to recreate this in 3D. So we wanna have screens like that, completely flat without the uh, phones and anything. So I'm just grabbing that screen and pasting it into Spline. And now what we do is we round the corners of our new object and you don't really need to make the rounded corners as rounded as they are on a real phone because this is gonna be like a dummy phone but try to make the roundness match the actual interface and since this is our screen i'm gonna extrude it to one point which basically means that it's still 2d but it's just a little bit thicker than like a flat plane and now the next step is to create our phone so in general, try to create a rectangle that's a little bit larger than your screenshot and don't think about the notch or the chin of the phone, just make it about the same distance from every side of the screen. And now round the corners to match the roundness of the corners inside. And of course you can select both of them and then use the centering tools to actually center it and then you should be able to see if it actually needs some adjusting. Okay, and once you have that, extrude this phone to about 15. Or actually even more, let's try 40. No, that's too much, 30 then. Yeah, that sounds about right for a phone. So now I'm just gonna click on this little blue arrow here and holding my shift key, I'm just gonna move this a little bit out, just enough so that the screen is visible on top of it. Okay, adjusting the corner just a tiny bit. Okay, and let's change the lighting on the phone to physical and let's change the color to white because we want to have this effect of, of a very light phone. Now let's modify the bevel value of our phone and I'm just going to set it to 1. So it just slightly extruded and then I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to move our image just a little bit out. Because as you can see, it's clipping right now. That's what it means when the textures are on the exact same level and the interface tries to decide which one should be first. So we need to move it just one point out. And as you can see, when I'm moving this, the Z value is changing. So you can actually place it to zero and type in 0 0.5, for example. And that way it's gonna be on top, but it's gonna be super close and it's gonna actually be embedded in the phone. Okay, now let's change the bevel value one more time to see what happens. And let's decrease the extrusion to 20. And yeah, that's gonna be a much better shape. So now let's grab the phone and move it back to our main image. And if it's clipping again, don't worry, just increase the Z value until it's fully visible and try to go by 0.5 to make it work. And one thing about 3D that's pretty important is that sometimes at some rotation you might start to think that your image on the screen is not really in the center of the phone, but that is because of perspective. So each time you're not sure if it's really in the center, just press this little button here, center it, and then you'll see if it's in the right spot. The idea is to create more of these screens. So I'm just pressing command and holding it, I'm just zooming out with my mouse wheel and now I'm gonna paste in additional screens from the same project and I'm gonna paste five of them. Okay, so we got our six images and now let's turn to rotate if they're on the same level. And yes, they are, which is really good because right now the idea is to zoom out a little bit and then just in case you name your phone, so it just uh, says phone here, and then you duplicate this element and just move it to the side and don't worry if the screenshot got lost, You'll, you're gonna find it. Just move it to the side and then duplicate it again, move it to the side again. So basically create our phones in roughly the right place. You need to remember the values that the first screenshot had. So it had a corner radius of 27 and a one point extrusion. So now let's go to every one of those images and let's type in the same thing. And as you can see, they're starting to show. 
Okay, and the last thing here is to change the Z value of those images to 1.5, which as you remember is the value that we had that was just above the phone. And if you don't see them, of course, you can select them from the layer list like I do here, and then you can see the outline of which image you're actually selecting. So Z 1.5, and it appears here. Now to quickly align them, you just select both the phone and the image and do the vertical alignment. And just in case, do it for all of them. Now we need to group them into groups that are gonna be much easier to actually set it up. So I'm just gonna drag and select and then command the G to group it. And I'm gonna call it screen one. Then this is gonna be screen two. Okay, once we have all the screens, you can actually close those groups. It's gonna get a little bit cleaner here. And the idea is to kind of set them at the same distance from each other. Okay, and now we do have a 3D set of phones with the screenshots from our brand new app inside them. But of course, this layout looks a little bit boring. So let's play around with this a little bit. First thing that we should do is to change the background color of the entire scene to white. But instead of just picking pure white, try to pick that little green that's in the background there. And then I'm gonna paste this over here. Okay, perfect. We got ourselves the screens. And now remember, once you start moving them around, you need to be in the flat position. So just press this button every time. Okay, so now we're in the flat plane. We can start moving them around and create ourselves a nice looking grid. So the first thing is that to grab the first screenshot and just move it higher. Then grab another one and move it underneath that. And to create a nice looking grid, you need to have a grid that's not completely uniform. So in this case, I'm just gonna move the phone on the left a little bit higher up, but then the phone on the right is gonna be even higher. And then I'm gonna align the rest of the phones to match this. And try to align them in a way that the distances between them vertically and horizontally are pretty similar. And normally if we wanted to add depth to this, we would have to make some of those images bigger in Sketch or in Figma. But here in 3D, we have the benefit of actually simply making them bigger by moving them closer. So I'm selecting the screen in the middle here, and I'm gonna rotate this a little bit just so I can see it. And then I'm gonna click on that little blue arrow here and holding shift, I'm just gonna drag this screen forward a little bit. And do the same thing with the other screens, trying to actually keep them at different levels, just not too much. So they need to be pretty close together, but just not too close. And you can also try playing around with the scale of them. So just select one of them and then click on scale. Just make sure that the lock is clicked and then pick scale. And normally if you go like with two, it's gonna look pretty weird because that phone is gonna get huge. So go with like a little increment, just 1.1 or 1.2. And since this phone is a little bit further away, I'm just gonna set it at 1.1. And this one is the farthest away from us. So this is gonna be, 0.9 and of course you might have to adjust the visual part so it matches so right now when the phone is closer you don't really need to stick to that same grid and the same distance but just make sure that it looks pretty natural and good enough okay now the easiest way to actually make it shine is to create those bouncy balls that we did the last time with the first iPhone and they are easy enough to do so let's do them so I'm just gonna go into the sphere option, clicking it. And then holding the shift key, I'm just gonna drag and create myself a sphere. And we have three distinct gradients in the app. There is a blue one, a kind of greenish blue one, and a purple. So let's create those balls in that color. So here, instead of color, let's choose gradient and choose the gradient to be radial actually. And once again, I'm just gonna pick the color from sketch. So I'm just gonna grab this one first. And now we need the other color. So I'm just gonna paste in the same color but this time I'm just gonna play around with the lightness of it. So I'm just gonna make this one a little bit lighter and then pick the other one and make it a tiny bit darker. Now let's recenter this and I'm gonna duplicate this one just below and I'm gonna create the color version for the blue one and the purple one. Okay, now it's time to basically arrange them. So duplicate them, make them bigger and smaller. 
just make sure that they are either hiding behind the screens or overlapping them from the front a little bit because that makes it a lot more interesting. Okay, now rotate it to the side and you can bring those to the back. I'm gonna pick the bigger ones in the back and the smaller ones in the front. So now is the very last step. Let's add a little bit of light to it because it's also gonna make it a little more alive. So I'm just gonna go to the plus here and I'm creating a directional light. And by default, it's gonna be placed somewhere around here, but I'm gonna rotate it a little bit to grab this and actually move the light to the front of the phones and then move it to the top. So it kind of gets there from the top. And if you want to play around with this a little bit more, you can actually make it a little bit diagonal. I'm just gonna keep it at the top. And then decrease the intensity a little bit. And we can actually grab our background color and set it for the light or even possibly make the light more colorful in that color. Okay, one last thing that we're gonna do here is to make the phone a tiny bit more interesting. I'm just gonna change the color of the phone to gradient and I'm gonna paste in that little light color that we had. And I'm gonna decrease the brightness of one of the ends a little bit. So yeah, you can recolor the phones a little bit to make them actually match the color of the interface on them or keep them white, whatever you prefer. And if you're happy with this, you can then go to that changed phone and then right click on it and copy material. And then once you go to any of the other phone background, you just go there with a right click and paste material. And once you have this, you can try making a more colorful background, for example, to make the white phone stand out a little bit more. Whatever you think will work well here. You can then disable this little glow effect here. Okay, and one last tip. If you want those bubbles to be more subtle, less kind of glossy 3D, you can actually add one more effect here called the depth. And then in depth, you actually paste the same color on both sides and then pick the top one and just slightly increase the brightness and decrease the brightness for the bottom one and change the origin to vector. And as you can see, it's a lot less lit, but actually kind of looks more subtle, more like a, a bubble. So then, of course, you can copy the material and paste it. And we can do the exact same thing with those. But for here, I'm just going to add the depth again. And let's do the same thing with the last one. Yeah, and there you have it. A very simple tutorial on how to create a floating grid of screens of your projects and some nice background effects to match that. And you can export this project to HTML, which is really cool because that way you can actually put it on your website or on your portfolio. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Cheers.